Hello, I'm Anne. Thank you for joining the Octavia Flynn Pub Public Library for our Authors Festival. This year, our, team, our theme is visual storytelling. Our next guest this afternoon is from 7000 BC. 7000 BC is a northern New Mexico based organization providing opportunities for comics writers and artists to develop their personal styles and storytelling voices while promoting an understanding of the cultural significance of comic art through seminars and workshops. Today, they are sharing with us the workshop, You Call That a Comic, exploring the difference between plot and theme. You can leave questions for them in the Facebook comments, tagging your questions with hashtag 7000 BC. Without further ado, allow me to introduce Jeff with 7000 BC. Hi, I'm Jeff Benham, and I'm the education coordinator for 7000 BC. Um, and the workshop we'll be doing uh, will we'll, um, we'll just jump right in. <laughs> so I'm going to begin by sharing a screen here. Um, There are books and, and comics and other types of, of media that uh, use non-traditional formats. So one of the well-known versions of this is the Griffin and Sabine uh, series from Nick Bantock, in which the story is told through uh, 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 letters and postcards. And um, so when you read the book, you're actually opening up the letters and pulling them out and unfolding them. And, and so you're getting the experience that the characters had. Um, and this is the sort of thing that we're going to be dealing with today is things that book that are book objects. And we're even going to take them a little bit further than, than what this does. Um, I also wanted to show real quickly, uh, this is called Building Stories. It's a comic by Chris Ware. And it comes in a box and it has all of these comics of different shapes and sizes that are all, that all look like different buildings in a neighborhood. And, and they, uh, they use buildings throughout the throughout the, the stories and the and so they reflect what the theme of the of the stories are is it is a uh, all tied up in the book object itself so we're going to come up with a story to begin with and um, you want to write it down three or four sentences um, and you just want to make sure that each sentence is a different event in the story something different happens so an example would be jennifer gets lost in the forest the coyote says it will lead her back to camp the coyote leads jennifer to the bear's den there's a simple example um, and we're just going to take a couple minutes and do that write down three or four sentences Everybody's got a three or four sentence story going. Um, Anne, do you want? Do, are you doing this along with us? <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm participating. <laughs> would you Would you like to read yours? Sure. So I have Sarah goes on a trip. She arrives at the airport late and misses her airplane, so decides to take the train instead. Okay, nice dramatic story there. <laughs> no, that's, that's good, that's a good story. Um, so what we're gonna look at with, with this is, uh, go back to my screen here. is the theme of your story. And we're gonna explore what the difference is here. Um, so with great power comes great responsibility. That's, that's a theme that, 
that we've heard before. Um, and it's, it's used in a lot of different comics, but it's probably best known uh, in Spider-Man. And it's used as the big tagline at the end of one of the Spider-Man films. Um, and it's basically the, the concept behind the story of Spider-Man. Um, so so the difference uh, between theme and plot tends to deal with um, the events. What we were doing just now was writing out the events and creating a plot. Um, Young man gains great powers and learns how to use them responsibly. That's, that's a reasonable explanation of the story of the plot points that happen in, in Spider-Man. The difference being the theme is the idea and the plot is the events. Um, and our, our one sentence there even breaks down into three sentences and three events. A young man gains great powers, learns to use them, learns to use them responsibly. That's, that's, that's his three points, plot points. Um, so, uh, Anne, I know it says don't tell us, but why don't you tell us what you think the theme of your story is? Um, so I've got Sarah who goes on a trip, um, but misses, um, misses her airplane by arriving late to the airport and instead decides to take the train. Um, I guess I would say that the theme that I see going into this is kind of, um, I guess, everyday adventure um, and maybe problem solving. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, good. That's a, that's a viable theme for your story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to look at this again a little bit more in detail. Um, so plot, your plot is about uh, missing the plane, taking the train. Right? Um, but but your theme has to do with with the idea with the ideas that you mentioned. So what if we, if we have someone else who was watching the story that, or reading the story that you just created, um, they might phrase it differently. They might still have the same, they would still have the same plot points, the same events, but they might phrase it differently. So for our, for our Spider-Man example here, young man gains great powers and learns how to use them responsibly. Someone else might see Spider-Man and say, well, an average young guy, you know, somebody, you, you're just asking them when they, just, when they put down the book, what, what, was, what did you just read? An average young guy, kind-hearted and a bit nerdy, gains extraordinary powers. He has carefree fun learning to use these powers. After an, impul an impulsive choice causes his uncle's death, he realizes how tiny decisions can carry the greatest potential. So you've still got basically the same story. Um, Gains powers, number one. Number two, um, learns to use the powers. Number three, learns to use them responsibly. So you still get the same plot points, but there's a different shift here now because it's a different person telling you what, what it was that they saw. And we all bring our own personal connections or, to the stories that we read or the films that we watch. Um, so the, to me, the, the central point in this version of it is, how, is about tiny decisions, about how tiny, the, tiny decisions can carry the greatest potential. Um, and so that, to me, sounds not like with great, great power comes great responsibility. That sounds to me like it's actually the reverse. With great responsibility comes great power because you've got the, uh, the tiny decision being the thing that 
that is most important. And that's what the responsibility is about, is that you're paying attention to all the details, all the, all the things that you don't normally notice. Um, it's not that you, it's not that Spider-Man has this great power that is thrust upon him and he becomes the great savior of the, of the entire nation. <laughs> it's that he learns that something tiny and simple, a little everyday thing has to be paid attention to. And that's where the greatest power comes from. So it's, there's a, so it's back down to what's, what are the events that happen and what's the big idea that comes from them? Um, and you as the reader or the viewer are looking at the events and understanding them based on your own life experience. So it kind of breaks down more like this. Um, and the thing that is most important to note is that you are in control of your plot. The plot of your story, that's up to you. But the theme of your story that's up to your reader. That belongs to them. Because you may have an idea of what you think your theme is, but depending on what the reader brings to fill in the details and the gaps and the understanding of, of those events, that's, that belongs to them. So, uh, we're going to have your reader um, define your theme for themselves. So the way we're going to do that is um, you're going to you're going to have a partner, and you're going to work with them, and they will tell you what they think your theme is, and you get to write that down. Okay. Does that make Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. And we've got four people here, right? So yes, we, we can, do. So. Actually, we'll put two of you in a room, and then one I'll stay on here with. OK. So I think I think it's you and me, Jeff. <laughs> oh, OK. OK. <laughs> All right. Um, so as I'd mentioned, um, the, the plot of my, the, the plot I have going is that Sarah goes on a trip, arrives late at the airport, misses her airplane, and decides to take the train instead. Right. Okay. Um, that to me sounds like it's about um, the ability to shift at a moment's notice. The, uh, it's about uh, learning to be flexible and swaying with the trees as they move, you know. <laughs> That kind of thing. Okay. Um, see if I can put that more succinctly, because it's good if we can if we can get it down to just a couple of words. Okay. Um, uh, but does that make sense to you? What I what I was saying. It does. Um, yeah, I think a lot of it is is about flexibility and kind of I guess rolling rolling with life as it comes at you. <laughs> Okay. I could see. <laughs> yeah. A, as yeah. a possible theme. Yeah. 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 I think flexibility is really a uh, flexible mind. Okay. Or, um, uh, yeah. Something along those lines. Okay. Me. So here's, the, here's what I wrote down. Uh, Bill runs to the stream. Thousands of tiny fishes nibbled his legs. Bill laughs at how they tickle. <laughs> okay. So what would be my theme for that? Could I hear it one more time? Just, just yeah. to think about it a little bit harder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bill runs to the stream. 
Okay. Thousands of tiny baby nip, baby fishes nibble his legs. Thanks. Bill okay. laughs at how they tickle. I, the first thing that comes to mind is joy. Um, is kind of the theme I feel there. Uh, okay. Everyday joy. Um, Everyday joy. I like that. Yeah. 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 At, at first, I wasn't sure if he was running because, you know, <laughs> he was on fire or something like that. <laughs> I guess I also don't know how old he is. So, like, I, oh, yeah. I think of him as a child. Okay. So that maybe makes a difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my, in, in my brain, he's a child, so. <laughs> okay. In my brain, he was, you know, 60s. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Huh. Uh, but maybe returning to his childhood home. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. Well, we've got our themes, and presumably everybody else does as well. So I'm going to go back to my screen. And we're going to sort of review quickly the differences here. Um, themes are abstract and, and subjective. Um, they're, they're an overall concept and, and it's up to the individual um, who's, who's observing the work, whatever type of work it is. Um, to make their own decision about what that theme is. Um, and sometimes it can be radically different. Uh, maybe you have a, maybe you have a story about a, a hunter tracking and shooting a moose. Um, and to someone who's a hunter living way out where there is no other way to get food, you know, this would be a big sort of triumphant thing. A lot of work to a triumphant end. But to vegetarian, you've got a whole other story. <laughs> uh, and so, so abstract and subjective versus plot, which is concrete. It's the facts of the story. It's, it's the the things that cannot be argued against. Um, so it's, yes, the person fell off of the cliff. Maybe they, maybe you might argue back and forth a little about how they fell or, you know, did they slip? Uh, were they pushed? But they definitely went off the cliff. They went down. <laughs> uh, so, uh, also, theme is a description. It describes what the story is, as opposed to creates the story. It tells you, it tells you the concept that the story is about. The plot tells you the story itself, the actual actions and events that happen. Um, and and it and plot becomes the structure upon which the story exists. And then theme comes after and says, oh, I see what your structure is. This is what it means. So, so that's our big overall difference between theme and plot. Um, so write down two numbers between one and 20. Any two numbers between one and 20. Do they have to be different numbers? Yes, different Okay, numbers. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
here's some obelisks from ancient Egypt. Um, and these are essentially book objects. These are giant books. <laughs> um, obelisks were, all obelisks in Egypt were created for the sun god Ra. And running down the length of them is the story of the sun god. And these weren't just recording his story. They were there as a way of reaching out, trying to touch, touch the sun god and, and find a way to connect with him to bring, bring Ra back down to earth to connect with us. Um, and so that's why they used obelisks to tell their stories, was that their stories about Ra were about us humans connecting with the sun. Yeah, so they came up with something that was based on the theme of their story and created that. Um, so I'm going to show you a few other examples of that sort of thing. Uh, here's a cathedral windows, uh, stained glass windows, telling a story. And the story that they're trying to tell is, is something they're trying to tell to bring the light to you in, in a metaphorical sense. So they did it literally as well. And so stained glass windows are bathing you in that story. And um, here's another. This is Jean Tinglet, who was a uh, surrealist artist. He created this machine out of scrap bits from, from uh, different technologies at the time. And the story that he was telling is how it destroys itself. It's a terrible, it's a terrible uh, type of thing that that exists it that it, that it exists in. And so the object that contained that story destroyed itself as part of as part of its existence. Uh, here's a book by Art Spiegelman. This is one of my one of my favorite <laughs> examples of this sort of thing. It's a children's book called Open Me, I'm a Dog. And the story is that there is a dog, and this is the dog. He's still got his leash. And if you open up the book, he's saying, open me, I'm a dog, because he needs help. And uh, the dog has been turned into a book by a witch. This witch has come and turned this poor dog into a, into a book. And it's only, and he's, and he's there to tell you his story as a book about how he's actually a dog. <laughs> and so your kid can read this and say, oh, look, I have a dog. First of all, it's nice to have a dog, a dog that you, you know, is easy to take care of. And you've got, and you've got your leash to carry him around with. Um, here's the one more example. This is uh, from uh, the, the libraries at Alexandria, which were believed to contain all the knowledge in the world on the scrolls that they housed there. And that's how they, their books were at that time, um, were all on scrolls. But here's a piece of jewelry, modern piece of jewelry based on the, the libraries of Alexandria. Um, uh, by, uh, by a woman named Kimber Leblik. And, and the, uh, the, the, the necklace houses all of these tiny little scrolls. Um, and you can actually take them out and change the stories, change out the stories. And the idea is that the story of this, this book object, 
is that is that uh, all of us carry our our stories on ourselves. We when someone meets us, they're meeting us, but they're also meeting all of the stories of, of our life. And so the idea is that it gives you a concrete place to to wear the stories of your life. And everyone knows that they can see those are your stories. Um, but they don't know your stories unless you want to take them out and share them with them. Uh, so um, in, in design, um, there are elements of design that you hear about a lot. There, uh, there are also uh, principles of design and the principles of design tend to be more like theme, more abstract. The elements of design tend to be more like, like, uh, like plot. They're more concrete. So um, elements are things like line and color. There's something that's concrete and definite. Uh, the, the principles of design are more like um, harmony and balance and things like that, where it's, it's, it's a more abstract concept. Um, with comics, I've been playing around with what I'm calling at this point, the narrative elements of sequential design, which is just a name I've come up with at this point. This isn't a definite thing, <laughs> but there are other other aspects that come into comics that that you can consider when um, when you're thinking about designing a comic and creating a comic. Um, some of these are things that I've pulled from uh, like live theater or or film. Um, and, and it's really just a way of taking a bunch of different things that affect what comics are like and think, trying to think about them in a new way. How can you apply these to, um, to the comic that you're creating? So with the examples I was just showing you, Sean Tingley may have been playing with color and time. Um, Time is an element that is that is in comics, in every comic you read, because between each between the panels, there's always something changing. But John Tingley played with time, with his object that started doing things, and once you started it, it ended up destroying itself. Um, and as as that was happening, all these it, it caught fire. So that changed the color of things. Uh, and in the cathedral, um, we were, they were working with immersion and completely uh, bathing you in the story and a significant moment. Because if you were to see this, um, at night with no street lights and no moon and overcast, you're not gonna see anything like this um, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be backlit in the same way. So the, so the moment makes a difference. Um, for the necklace, it's, it's a symbol of the, the idea behind it. And it's also ephemeral because you can swap up, you can swap out the stories and change who you are. And for Open Me, I'm a Dog, the elements that it's, that it's playing with could be interaction and the materials. Um, you're interacting with it. You can interact with it as a dog or as a book. And and it's going to change your understanding of it. Um, 
And the materials are important here, definitely, because this has got to be a dog and a book. <laughs> um, OK, so you wrote down two numbers a little while ago. So you're going to apply those two elements. And we'll, we'll see what, what elements you came up, came up with in just a second. But you're going to apply two elements to your theme and create a container for the story that you came up with. Okay. And remember that there is still a story in this. You can, you're not just creating an object that is based on the theme. It is a, it's an object that is still a book. It has to be able to be read. You, still, you have to be able to open it up and, and not necessarily open it up, but you have to be able to read the comic. There is a comic in there, buried in there somewhere. Um, so is this all making sense up to this yes. point? Okay. So for the two numbers you wrote down, here's uh, the, the, uh, the elements that you get to work with. And what you want to do is think about um, how those elements can exist in an object and enhance the theme that you have for your story. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take like 15 minutes and, and do this, if that's all right. Okay. okay. And if you have any other questions. Okay, uh, let me, let me take a look. <laughs> And just a reminder for any of our participants in the Zoom um, that you're more than welcome to place questions and such in the chat um, as they come up. Oh, um, I do have a comment coming in from one of our Zoom participants. Um, she says she didn't want to interrupt, but she's not sure as to her theme. Her sentences are Izzy climbs the tree to read. Izzy slowly starts to drift off, and Izzy falls and is swallowed by the earth. Wow. Um, Interesting. I do like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's like kind of an element of like almost magic or supernatural there, um, with her being swallowed yeah, by the earth. Um, and the and I think there's also uh, something about dream versus reality. Ooh. And where where is this character in that realm? Yeah. Um, you know, is she already in a dream? Nodding off in the dream? Falling and swallowed by the earth? Is she... Uh, is she falling into a dream realm when she falls? Is it a vision? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think definitely it's, it's something to do with uh, awareness of reality. Because, yeah, I mean, it, it, could it be reminds me of as, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Um, it just makes me think of like the concept of liminal spaces, kind of like the crossing over between reality and the dream world, so to speak. Um, right. So. And life and death. Even. And life and death. I mean, this could be falling into the earth to be buried. Yeah. Um, and I will tell um, this comment came from Danelle and if she wants to turn on her mic, she, she's more than welcome to. Um, 
but um, yeah, those are those are some of the thoughts Jeff and I have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't want to interrupt. Well, <laughs> oh, I know. No problem. I love I, I love your I love your plot. <laughs> Um, Thank you. <laughs> I'd say uh, I would go with something about um, yeah, re uh, reality awareness. Whatever that reality may be. I do have another question that comes from one of our staff members about uh, planning, um, planning comic book and graphic novel spreads um, and how those things come together um, in terms of prepped and random designs and kind of how you, you make space of like make use of panels versus like full page spreads and things like that. Um, and if um, how, how that planning process uh, figures into creating a comic. Um, so how, how you kind of go about choosing between, you know, what becomes a full page spread, what has um, varying oh, panels decide, in it and things like that, yeah. How do you decide which, which things you... I guess how you decide which things you, things you highlight. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it really depends on what you are trying to get across. Um, I mean, as a creator, you're still aiming for a specific theme. Mm -hmm whether or not that's what your reader actually gets out of it. Um, but the one of the other workshops that we do um, is, is about thumbnailing things out. And one way that we approach it is to take your script and do the entire thing, six panels a page, all the same size, all the same size panels, and then go back through and say, okay, this piece needs to be emphasized. This needs to be emphasized. This doesn't really matter. This is a, yeah, you know, this moment can be combined into this other image in another panel. Um, and figuring those, those things out that way. Um, and another thing that you can do is uh, just try and be as specific as, as possible with uh, what your intention is. So if you're, you know, if you're trying to do a mystery versus trying to do a Western, you're gonna make different choices. Mm -hmm. And if you've got something that has both of those in there, you're gonna be, have to decide where is the mystery more important? Where is the Western more important? Mm -hmm. um, and looking at those kinds of choices will inform what you do with your panels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that, does that help? That, that, that does answer the question, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, where are we, where are you guys at with creating your book objects? Um, I've got some rough uh, sketches and outlines. <laughs> um, okay. For um, just to let you know, the, the two numbers that I chose were scale and interaction, so 12 and 17. Um, okay. So when I think of scale, I think of size. And the way I was thinking of it is that like this item would be kind of like tall and skinny. <laughs> Um, and the way the interaction would play into it would be um, that the book would kind of move as the story moves. So as you have things like airplanes taking off, it kind of starts off horizontal and then it shifts to vertical and like kind of rotates around as you're reading. Um, and then it also made me wonder if maybe this work is wordless, like it's just the different kind of like, I guess, like visual vignettes of, of my traveler as she's going through making her choices. So the object itself shifts? It's yeah, the object itself shifts as you interact with it, yeah. <laughs> nice, 
Nice. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, well, I'll I'll show you what what mine are. Um, I ended up with three and seventeen, ephemeral and interaction. <laughs> and and we had decided that everyday joy was the theme. Mm -hmm. So let's see if I can get my video going again. So my we had the story of the nibbling the nibbling uh, fish baby fishes. Nope, there there goes my picture again. Okay. So I, I decided to start with something wrapped up in fish paper. So it didn't look like it was much of anything particular and maybe it smelled bad. <laughs> but you open it up and it's full of feathers and, and frogs, which would be something unexpected and kind of enjoyable in a way. And I didn't quite get to the point yet of, uh, of drawing up what happens with the frogs, but if you turn them over, on their bellies is drawn the story. <laughs> and so it, it's, uh, it's something interactive that you, that you work with, but it also is ephemeral because those frogs are gonna hop away <laughs> before too long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and I suspect the feathers will blow away too. <laughs> I really like your idea of the of having something that, oh. that moves on. So I kind of I've got I've got sketches too. So I've kind of got a oh, I don't know if you can see. I've got like the plane taking off without her on it, and then we've got our train going out of the nice. station. And then I've also got some sketches of like her suitcase rolling in different directions as it kind of moves along as she's moving. Um, Nice. Um, from one place to another. Right. You could even do it as a uh, uh, lenticular, uh, which is where, which is the the kind of thing where you look at an image and it, and when you turn it different directions, it you see a different image. It shifts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that could be really neat. And so it yeah. could all be the same, the same image that you're just shifting around. <laughs> shifting around to see different things. Oh, yeah. that's really cool. I'd never <laughs> thought of it that way. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Anybody else have one they want to share? Let's see if we have anyone. Anyone with video who wants to share? If not, that's okay. I won't force you. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. No? Okay. It's all right. Um, yeah, this is this one is falling apart. Here's one I did recently, but it was uh, a story about the formation of the Earth, <laughs> and so I ended up uh, putting it on a rock, <laughs> and it was it was the comic was drawn on the rock, but not with with paint. It was drawn on the rock with uh, nutrients that attracted specific type specific colors of fungus so that as as the, as the <laughs> fungus came and grew it showed you the story and became more and more colorful over time as well until eventually you had things vines and things growing out of the back Darn of the rock. <laughs> that, is, that is such a cool concept <laughs> i like it cool um, Okay, should we wrap stuff up then? Uh, sure. Um, I'll, I'll let you go ahead first. Okay. Um, well, the, uh, this, this is pretty much it as far as how this workshop works. Um, and uh, we do run other workshops that are pay what you can, um, that are on Eventbrite. Uh, and called Between the Panels. Um, 
and the cats help with that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we like to come to libraries too and, and do workshops in person as well. Wonderful. When that's, when that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> And are your upcoming workshops available on your website for people to look at and register yeah. for? Okay. Yeah. And www.7000bc.org. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, we look forward to the day that we can host you guys in person again. Um, yeah. <laughs> hopefully it's coming soon. Hopefully. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'll and thank you very much for having us this time around. Oh, you're, you're most welcome. Um, Anyone who's on the Zoom call is free to stay on the Zoom call um, for a few minutes. I'm going to give us a brief uh, closing statement. Um, I want to thank everyone for attending um, this session for the Authors Festival for the Octavia Flynn Public Library. Um, we are still doing daily events for the rest of the month of May. I know the rest of the month of May is not very long, um, <laughs> but for the full, full schedule, please feel free to check out our website, OFPL.online, for Zoom links and registrations for those sessions. Um, if you want to ask questions, there are spots for you to do that sort of that sort of thing. Um, we have makeup artist Goldie Tom with us tomorrow from 1 to 2 p.m. Um, so if you have any hair and makeup questions, please feel free to drop her a line. We also have another panel coming up on Saturday with the American Institute of Graphic Artists, the New Mexico chapter, um, and they will be talking about translating story to image. We would love to see you guys there as well, and we will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Right. See ya. <laughs>